Thanks for checking out this show review video. So this is for the 2003 TV series Tremors that originally was done for the Sci-Fi Channel back then, and then it had a second run on G4. One of the interesting things is, though, when it was originally run on the Sci-Fi Channel, they actually accidentally, well, actually, I don't even know if it was accidental. I assume it is. They ran the episodes out of order. And then when they it was rerun on the G4 channel, which RIP G4 because I like that channel, um, they put it in the correct order. So it is in the correct order available on YouTube at the moment, totally for free. Just search Tremors. There's actually a Tremors channel on YouTube and it has all the episodes of this 2003 TV series. And I will say that if you're a fan of the Tremors films, if you like kind of the Tremor, Tremors world, and even if you just like Burt Gummer, I would highly recommend this show. Yes, it's kind of cheesy. It's a 2003 show made for sci-fi. Just know that. You know, for with that time period, you know CGI was being used, and it didn't look so good, and it certainly doesn't hold up well now, but it's not all CG. They do have some practical effects in it, and that's kind of important to you know, not make it look totally terrible, but just think about all the shows that kind of came out around that time, especially ones for sci-fi. Like, it's kind of cheesy. It's kind of corny. Um, the dialogue's not the best. The acting certainly is not the best. Although, you know, Michael Gross's Burt Gummer is... Michael Gross is Burt Gummer. I mean, he's, he's a joy to watch, to be honest. But I think at the heart of it, there's a good story continuation going on there. But um, I don't want to talk too much about that right now because I'm going to go through it in a kind of more systematic way, but uh, I'm just saying all this to say, if you're a Tremors fan, definitely check it out. If you even like, I wouldn't say it's necessarily for people who just like the first Tremors, but if anyone's gone past that, if you like Tremors 1, 2, and 3, certainly do that. Uh, if you didn't like 4 and after, then I would still recommend the TV series for you because, well, I'll talk about that in a second, but... Uh, there really won't be spoilers for this because it's too hard for me to do spoilers for show reviews because I'd have to kind of go like episode by episode or have one video that's just like an hour long, which isn't worth doing. So anyway, uh, the writing credits are for Christopher Silber, uh, who's actually done a bunch of episodes of like CSI New York, NCIS, and NCIS New Orleans, so did a lot of TV show things. Uh, Babs Grayhosky, who did episodes of Magnum P.I., The A-Team, which I watch The A-Team all the time. I love that. Um, the Greatest American Hero, which everyone knows the theme song for that. And Swamp Thing, which was a good show back in the day. Uh, John Shulian, who wrote episodes for Miami Vice, Hercules, Jag, and Xena Warrior Princess. Which, if you, if you remember, like, Hercules and Xena Warrior Princess... It's the same kind of look, same kind of feel for the show, to be honest. Like, just think that time period. And then Stephen D. Bender, who also wrote episodes for NCIS. So, that's kind of your background on who the writers were for it. So, this series actually came out after Tremors 3, Back to Perfection. And it was produced at the same time they were doing Tremors 4, uh, The Legend Begins. Which, Tremors 4, in my opinion, is probably the worst of all the Tremors films. So... Yeah, but, and honestly, like, Tremors 4, I don't even think it matters if you watch that, because it's like this kind of really stupid backstory that you just don't even really need, so you can kind of just skip that, uh, and I would on honestly say just skip 6. Um, I have in-depth reviews on all of the Tremors movies on my channel, just so you know, and this TV show one is just to kind of cap it all off. Um, Brent Maddock and S.S. Wilson... Um, they had written the scripts, the script for a bunch of the show episodes way back, like in 1993, um, but it ended up not happening. So they had this idea a long time before that, like 10, 10 years earlier, and it just never took off. So when it finally did, uh, they ended up recycling a bunch of the material from these original scripts, and then these new writers kind of took that original material that was intended for a series and just kind of turned it into something more for that time period, I guess. Um, so it, I think it's good because it has uh, some good tie-ins to the the first three movies for that reason because of, you know, kind of recycling stuff from Maddock and Wilson. So that's, you can you can tell that when you know it and then you're, you're watching the show. Uh, in 2017, Sci-Fi ordered a pilot. This pisses me off, by the way. Not like really, I'm, you know, it, just, it, it makes me sad kind of. 
In 2017, Sci-Fi ordered a pilot for a new series with Kevin Bacon in it. Uh, yes, a new Tremor series with Kevin Bacon. Obviously, it didn't happen. Vincenzo Natale was supposed to be directing. Okay, Vincenzo Natale, who did like Cube and Splice. Natale and Kevin Bacon Tremor series, it would have been great. Then in 2018, Kevin Bacon announced that the network decided not to move forward with the show. Sci-fi, what are you doing? You put the 2003 Tremor series on TV. You can certainly do another one with Kevin Bacon. Because here's the thing. This is why I'm sad about this. I've watched all the Tremors movies. i watched this series. The only thing missing overall story-wise for all the Tremors stuff is what happened with Val. There's no follow-up after the first Tremors movie of what happened with Val. I assume that's what we were going to get with another series. And I feel like that would have been so nice, not just because it's more Tremors Entertainment, but they could have really filled in all the gaps and kind of put a neat bow on the story. Just saying. I, then that makes me sad. I know I'm getting a little too wrapped up in this, but it, when you watch all the Tremors movies and the TV show, you get immersed. I'm just saying. Uh, the Graboids traveling through the ground in this is done in CG. Just know that. It looks terrible. Uh, they do like a little bit of underground of them going through. But the worst of it is, you know how in the original movie you'd like see the hump of the Graboid underground? And they did that with practical effects so it looked good. Well, they do that with CG in the show and it looks awful. It looks really bad. Uh, it's very laughable. A lot of the CG is very, very laughable. It's terrible. But... If that doesn't bother you, or if you like that because you can laugh at it, then you're you're gonna be fine with this because that's the worst part. That's the thing that would might take you out of this most. That and you know some of the acting, but um, but they do do practical effects for a bunch of the graboid type creatures, so that's good. Uh, it does pick up right after Tremors three with Melvin trying to you know move into perfection with um, some development stuff. There's a little bit dealt with that throughout the series, but not as much as I would assume going into it they were going to do. Um, someone shows up to pick up the Graboid tourist business, which I like that aspect of it because we got that in the third one where they're kind of like, oh, we're going to you know adapt to the Graboids being here, specifically El Blanco in the end, and you know, we're going to, we're going to make money at this. Like it's, it's a thing. Like people know about Graboids. We're going to merchandise all this stuff and we're going to have these tours and this is how we're going to bring money into perfection. And that's kind of a lot of what happens with the show is it's, it's really like a day to day of those people living in perfection and how they're dealing. And one of the big things is they're dealing with living with El Blanco, that, that white Graboid that's relatively passive for a Graboid, um, in the show. And so it's just interesting to see kind of how, like, they build their lives around this one Graboid, and then there's a bunch of other, you know, crazy stuff that ends up happening, obviously, but um, it's not all Graboid-related, although it is, like, nature-related. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but um, I don't know. It's just interesting, especially if you're into the Tremors universe, to just see the day-to-day -day at the, at the, in the town. The interactions between the characters are where I think... The dialogue and the scripts really shine because, like, you feel the relationships between them. And that's what I like most. Like, those are, they, they feel like real relationships. They're well fleshed out. There's good comedy to it, in my opinion. And it's just enjoyable. It, it's light and it's fun. And it's truly one of those shows that, you know, if you're doing something, you can just throw it on in the background and you don't have to fully pay attention, but you're hearing all the dialogue. So you really, you know what's going on for the most part. Um, yeah, so uh, Bert is typical Bert in this, which is pretty much what matters the most. He's not in every single episode. I think he doesn't show up in one, one or two episodes, actually. Actually, two the last two episodes, he doesn't even show up at all, which is weird. They have an explanation for that, so I wonder if maybe Michael Gross like just wasn't available, or I don't know what happened there. That that That's an interesting thing I just thought of. But yeah, he's in all the episodes until the last two, and probably not a coincidence the last two are maybe the weakest the the last episode by far is the weakest of all the episodes which kind of sucks and there's 13 episodes by the way um so there's plenty to watch and they're you know they were made hour long for tv so available on youtube they're like 42 minutes ish because they don't have commercials obviously 
so yeah but Bert when Bert's in it Bert's typical Bert and that's very endearing that's what a lot of people look for um do, 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 do. uh so because it's made for TV there's some things that look bad like the CG dust in particular there's like CG dust in it I'm like why would you do that just use real dust because the CG looks terrible and shaking cameras to simulate shaking ground like it's one of those things you can tell for sure, kind of like the old school Star Trek, where they just like shake the camera and everyone's like, oh, oh, you know what I mean? So, uh, it, you know, just corny things. Uh, Dean Norris is in this as a government agent, which is great. And there's there's a lot of good back and forth with his character, um, Twitchell, I think is his name. Yeah, his name's Twitchell in it. His character and the people in the town, because they don't really like dealing with him, but for the fact that he, he keeps showing up because of the government's involvement with the town because of the Graboids, uh, he kind of becomes a part of the town, in a sense, and they eventually kind of, like, accept him as part of the town, but they also still have this bit of a contentiousness with them, so there's a lot of, you know, good back-and-forth banter. The second episode really does pick up, and the introducing of someone that you think can kind of be like Bert was was a interesting aspect to it i mean there are a lot of interesting story aspects that they throw in here and it, it sometimes it seems like it's a little bit x-files inspired now i don't want to say that to mislead people it's not like the x-files x-files is way different way better written way better done so don't think that but there's there's some kind of like x-files inspired elements to the show i will say and you'll see what i mean if you watch it a character named tyler is in the new is the new jack from Tremors 3, Back to Perfection, just so you know. He's the guy who kind of comes in, and he takes over Jack's um, tourist business to, like, show Graboids. So um, I like that aspect of it. He it be, In the beginning, I was like, eh, acting-wise, he's not that great. But he actually does get better as the time goes on. So I started to actually kind of enjoy that character. There's a typical corny style of TV music from this time period. And that is definitely what's going on in this series. So if you think, like, again, think back to that time period, those types of shows, you know, Hercules, Xena Warrior, Princess, stuff like that. Think about what that music was like. It's, yeah, it's corny. It's not great. Like, the mute, mute, you know, the CG, the music, stuff like that, they just don't hold up. They just don't. So when you're watching it, you have to remember it was that time period. The tourist aspect of the town is probably one of the most fun things about it, and Bert's survivalist stuff is a lot of fun, too, because he's still doing that in this show. Um, and that, you know, adds more comedy to it. It adds more kind of adventure and fun to it. Uh, there's a plot point about halfway through that really ups the ante uh, on what's going on and opens possibilities for a bunch of other problems to happen. So for that reason, honestly, I really would have liked to see more than just one season of this. I think they had plenty of places they could have gone because you think about it and you're going into it and you're just like, how are you going to do 13 episodes of, you know, Graboids, Shriekers, and Ass Blasters? And they don't. You know, they, they throw something else into the mix and it doesn't feel out of place. It feels like it definitely fits. It kind of expands the universe of Tremors and it expands the problems of, per, of the town of perfection uh that you know would set it up for doing many seasons of a show like this and i'm just sad we didn't get more of it uh i guess i'm part of the problem of why that didn't happen because i didn't watch it back then i'm watching it way later so al blanco is somewhat of a character in this and i think that's a very fun element too so you know you're you're seeing all these interactions with the people in the town but then El Blanco almost feels like they're one of the people. You know, El Blanco's almost one of the people in, in, a, in a way because a lot of things are kind of built around that. Since it's about the day-to-day -day imperfection, it ends up becoming somewhat a somewhat over-the-top story about human resilience in the face of nature, but also nature that's meddled with by human beings. You know, it's hard enough for humans to deal with uh, the harsh the harshness of nature, whether it be creatures or natural disasters or things like that. But it's even tougher when humans get involved and they somehow mess with that environment. They mess with that nature and make it worse. And that's something that's kind of at play in here. So it was hard enough when just Graboids and Shriekers and Ass Blasters show up, which, you know, it's kind of like that's what they do with the movies. You know, in the beginning, it's just the Graboids and that's tough to deal with. 
and then it changes in the next movie to shriekers too and that's even tougher to deal with and then it, in the third movie it's ass blasters and that's even tougher to deal with and i feel like with the show they continue to build on that and they add even more and there's even more to deal with so it just keeps you know it keeps with the movies it, it really does uh, yeah, and like I said, the final episode really does fall flat. It, it was pretty boring, definitely the worst and most boring of all of them. Uh, but, you know. And the last thing I kind of want to say about the show is that the actors that there were, there are a few cam, like cameo actors in it. Um, and two of them in particular I was pretty excited about. I'll just tease this right now because this might get you to watch it. There is one episode where Michael Rooker is in it. I like Michael Rooker. I think he does a great job. And he's fun in this. And then there are a few episodes with Christopher Lloyd. So if you like Christopher Lloyd, uh, he plays the same type of character as from Back to the Future, to be honest, Doc Brown. So if you like that, you might want to check it out just for that. And like I said, I think he's in, he's definitely in two episodes, maybe three. I can't remember because they're all kind of running together in my head. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, um, it it's hard for me to rate this just because like, I liked it a lot, but I also know that it's not that great at the same time. So I'm going to give it kind of two ratings. I think most people would watch it and maybe rate it somewhere around like a two. Um, but me watching it, I think it's really, in my opinion, more like a three, three and a half. So just to be the most fair, I'm going to say a three. My official rating will be three out of five stars for it. But I think a lot of people might put it more towards the two. Um, I think this deserves a lot more eyes. I don't hear people talk about it ever, but I think it's worth it. Also, if people are interested, if you don't want to watch it on YouTube, but you want to watch it and you don't want to, you don't mind spending a little bit of money, uh, I found the series available on DVD through Best Buy's website, um, and it's like 15 bucks or something. So, I don't know, maybe inspiring some people. I'm actually thinking about buying it because it, it, it was a good time. But anyway, um, put your comments down there, especially people who have watched all the Tremors movies, and especially if you watch this TV show, I, I would love to talk to people about it. Um, I've been deep in this Tremors world, <laughs> and it, it's, it's been a lot of fun, to be honest. So anyway, put some comments down there, whatever you want to talk about. Uh, do me a quick favor, though. Hit that like, hit the like, but mainly hit the subscribe button, because the majority of the views I get on videos are from non-subscribers, and it would really help out if it's from subscribers. So hit that subscribe, and it's it's totally quick and painless. doesn't mean anything to you, but means a lot for my channel, so I appreciate it. If you've already subscribed, make sure you hit that like button just to let, you know, let me know you're still watching. Um, but yeah, regardless, thanks for taking your time watching this, and until next time, keep it brutal.